Oh, good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 pandemic updates. I'm Kayode Okikulu. First, the highlights. Lagos accredits 150 private centers for vaccine rollout, plans to add more. The Yobe State Government tackles vaccine hesitancy, takes campaign to tertiary institutions. And outside the country, French governments tackle fifth wave of COVID-19 infections with current prevention methods. Good to have you join us on the program as we take you through some of the vital information and events you need to know about COVID-19. Well, the goal is to arm you with knowledge which you need to keep yourself and those around you safe from the virus. And on the program, we begin from Ikiti State, where youths have been deliberating on the best way to shake off the unpleasant economic effect of COVID-19 and get their businesses back on track. Now, this formed part of a conversation at a youth convergence forum held in Adwikiti, the state capital. Well, the youth acknowledged the negative consequences of the pandemic on businesses and they highlighted the need for youth to seek broader mentorship, collaborate productively and get vaccinated to stay alive. So that's some conversation around livelihood. But then looking ahead, we're counting down to the festive season when there's usually a lot of coming together. But there are precautions we must all take so the celebrations don't turn sour. We'll explore that as well on the program today. But first, let's show you the latest COVID-19 trends, both nationally and globally. 144 additional persons in Nigeria have been recorded as positive for COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the latest figures were reported from 12 states and the FCT, an indicator of significant rise from the figures reported 24 hours earlier. Imo State had the highest number of infections with 38 cases. Plateau State recorded 20 cases. Lagos reported 17 cases, while the FCT reported 16. Kwara and Zamfara had 15 cases each. Ondo and River State had seven and five cases. Taraba and Oyo had four and three cases. Bauchi had two cases, while Edo and Ikiti came in with one case each. Today's report takes backlogs of cases from the FCT, Plateau and Lagos into account. Backlogs of recoveries from the FCT are also accounted for in today's report. No new cases were reported from Katsina, Ogun. Oshun, and Sokoto states. The total case load in Nigeria has risen to 213,321. 436 more people were discharged, bringing the total number of recoveries to 206,206. There were five additional deaths from COVID-19 complications reported in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of deaths to 2,973. Currently, there are over 4,000 people on admission, while over 3.4 million samples have been tested. The latest update from the National Primary Health Care Development Agency shows that more than 5.9 million Nigerians have received the first shot of the COVID-19 vaccine, while over 3.4 2 million persons have been fully vaccinated. Globally, more than 7.5 billion vaccines have been administered. In Africa, there are more than 8.5 million confirmed cases and over 221,000 deaths have been recorded across countries on the continent. More than 254 million people all over the world have contracted COVID-19, while deaths are over 5.1 million. So, it's just two days to the start of the mass vaccination campaign by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, that's the NPHCDA, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Health, 
and the Presidential Steering Committee. There's a couple of grey areas to explore. But first, here's what was said about the campaign at the latest PSC briefing in the nation's capital, Abuja. I believe uh, with your support, uh, that of the media particularly, we should be able to drive home uh, this process and ensure that our people are ready to participate in this mass vaccination exercise that we are rolling out on Friday. Because that's the only way. If you look at the sciences and the data that is coming out of uh, other countries, particularly in Europe, Eastern Europe, most of the countries that have the least vaccination percentages are the ones that are having the very outrageous surges in, uh, in infection. Let's not forget, COVID-19 has taken the lives of over 5 million people globally. 5 million is not a small number. In one and a half years, 5 million people have died. This is for where they keep the statistics. Don't talk about countries where we don't have very good uh, record keeping uh, sessions. There are so many people that have died of COVID-19 in Nigeria that we have not recorded. Because they die and the people in the villages and in the towns will say that oh, probably people from his village are the ones that pursued him to the city and killed him. We have all sorts of explanations to give. But I believe strongly that working together with the media, we should be able to accelerate this mass vaccination exercise so that we can reduce to a large extent the the, the, the adverse effect of this COVID. So this will form a major part of a conversation on the program tonight. But Lagos State is aggressively recruiting the private sector to increase the number of COVID-19 vaccinations administered each day. And the Lagos State Commissioner for Health said this while playing host to the new country director of the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention. According to him, the state has already accredited 150 private sector entities for the vaccination rollout, and there are plans to add even more to this rollout. And now to Yobe State, where fake news on social media has been identified as a major setback to vaccine uptake in Nigeria. And the Executive Secretary of the Yobe State Primary Healthcare Management Board, Dr. Babagana Kundi Machina, shared this concern at a sensitization exercise with support from UNICEF at the Federal Polytechnic Damaturu and College of Agriculture, Gujba both in Yobe State. Uh, though he was represented, he assured the students of the tertiary institutions that the vaccine is safe and charged them not to be deceived as many have died with COVID-19 even in countries with more resources and health facilities. So we'll go on a quick break now. When we return, we'll enter the conversation with a member of the Presidential Steering Committee regarding questions about the mass vaccination campaign, the countdown to the Yuletide season, and what the plan is exactly. So stay with us. Welcome back. So there are different approaches to this vaccine mandate, both at the national and state levels. We're going to explore some of these approaches. And let's begin with Lagos State. Earlier on, we told you about the move by the Lagos State government to accredit 150 private sector players to ensure that vaccines reach more people. So let's take a listen to the Lagos Commissioner for Health. We understand some of the dynamics of the waves of COVID that we've experienced in Lagos. They are usually coinciding with the movement of large numbers of people into Lagos for at various times of the year, usually for the Christmas season or for the summer holiday. We know that there is a large uh, wave going on in Europe and across Russia and Eastern Europe. And we know that we're going to expect a large number of people coming back home for the Christmas and New Year uh, festivities. And usually if they're coming from an area like Europe where there is a high prevalence of disease, uh, naturally that is an opportunity for the virus and the new variations to come into Lagos. So to counteract that, we're doing two things. 
We're making sure that we enforce the travel guidelines and that people coming in are doing their tests on day two and that they're coming in with negative PCR tests that are legitimate and not fake. So the more we vaccinate, the evidence now around the world is unrefutable. COVID vaccination protects people from severe illness from COVID and ultimately death. We know like in every other country, we've got to involve the private sector because the number of vaccines we need to deliver is in excess of what the government facilities can administer. And we want to get into every nook and cranny in Lagos, to every local government, every corner of Lagos. And so we are now recruiting private sector, we're training private sector. And as of today, we've added 150 private sector facilities to our vaccination rollout. This is in addition to about 200 in the public sector. And every day we're going to add more private sectors until we get to about 400 or even 600. So that's for Lagos State. But let's zoom out, so to speak, and take a look at this nationally. Recently, the Presidential Steering Committee announced plans for a mass vaccination campaign. But there are questions as to what shape this campaign will take. I mean, we're said to have 12 million vaccines in stock. Close to 6 million Nigerians have taken the jab so far. But the target is 100 and. 11 million people. That's about half of the population. And now that the festive season is upon us, what goal is realistic and how do we communicate that to people to get their buy-in? Well, Dr. Mukhtar Mohammed is the National Incident Manager and Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 and he joins us from our Buja studio. Dr. Mohammed, thank you uh, for joining us on the program. Uh, let me just start off uh, quickly. What more can you tell us about this planned mass vaccination campaign? I mean, what shape is it going to take and how is it different from the current campaigns we have seen across board? Uh, thank you, Coyote. Uh, good evening. Um, uh, as uh, you mentioned, certainly, uh, the federal government is embarking on a mass campaign program to ensure that as many people get vaccinated uh, as possible. In the past, uh, we've had scarcity of vaccines. Um, we did not have enough. We're scrambling to get um, a few doses from here and there to vaccinate our population. Um, currently now, we have uh, enough vaccines in the country. There is no scarcity in any of the states. Um, and therefore, the challenge is to push out these vaccines uh, to make sure as many Nigerians get vaccinated as possible. This is a very critical time for us. Um, this is November. Very soon, people will start traveling uh, back to the country. And as you heard from the Lagos State Commissioner, um, all the waves have coincided uh, with periods of peak travel. Um, and therefore, we are preparing and we are prepping up um, you know, to uh, curtail any importation that we are going to have with its uh, consequences. Um, certainly, the plan now by the Nigeria National Primary Healthcare Development Agency is to intensify uh, the vaccination activities among public health facilities, private uh, health facilities, and also provide um, uh, you know, on the spot uh, vaccination at specific locations. Um, but the plan is not going to be done uh, maybe everywhere across the country at once. Um, we are zeroing in on specific high-risk states. If you look at Lagos, uh, FCT, Ogun, Oyo State, Kaduna, Plateau, uh, these are the states that have previously, um, you know, shown very high uh, predisposition to having more infections than, than others. And therefore, it is going to be stepwise. Um, you are aware of the mandate that has been given by the federal government regarding uh, federal health workers and federal government offices in the country. That is no going back uh, in, in that one. This is not a punitive measure, but it is a step, you know, to make sure that our workplaces become safe uh, to ensure that, um, you know, people are, are protected when they come to the workplace um, and also to encourage other Nigerians who are uh, maybe in the private sector or um, the non-organized uh, sector uh, to also recognize that the federal government is taking this seriously and has imposed this mandate, you know, on uh, the public servants. So it's going to start uh, now or it has already started. Um, and the target, as you mentioned, yes, it's very ambitious target, but we'll try as much as possible as we can to make sure that we cover some ground.
You know, interestingly, uh, we had this conversation with a public health physician a few days ago on the program. And, you know, the question was put uh, as to what, what kind of approach should be taken. Is it persuasion, appeal, or coercion? And he was of the opinion that coercion might be extreme, that at this point it's important to encourage people, I mean, to, on their own volition, go ahead and take these vaccines. So I wonder how the government is approaching this. I mean, you've said this is not a punitive measure, but clearly it says that if people are not vaccinated, they, sh they will not be allowed into, you know, uh, federal government uh, agencies, departments and the rest. So how are you mixing persuasion, appeal and coercion in all of this, really? So if you look at it, it is actually a phased um, um, approach and it's a combination um, of all of this. Um, prior to the December 1 mandate that was given by federal government, um, we've been mounting intensive um, campaigns, engagement um, and persuasion, as you'll call it, through every available um, you know, uh, medium. Uh, to get the public to accept these vaccines. Now we have started, you know, the, um, the enforcement side, which is government looking at its own public places to make them safe. Um, and even this one, it is not that you don't have an, an option. There is an option, but it's a matter of, um, uh, you know, how, how, what are the stakes, you know, for that, for that option. If you are not vaccinated, you can still have access to government premises as long as you have done a COVID test that is not more than 72 hours. So you have that option. Um, continue to do a PCR test every three days uh, before you access a government facility or just go and get your vaccine. Um, I think um, we don't need to really overbeat uh, this point um, in the sense that we're talking about public health. We're talking ab about the greater good of the people, the greater good of the country. Um, we have seen what is going on currently now um, in Europe and many parts of, of the world. As the winter you know, becomes more intense, there are more infections that are going on. And most of these infections now are among the unvaccinated uh, population. They are the ones that get sick, they are the ones that get hospitalized, and mostly they are the ones that die from, from COVID. Um, recently, um, you know, even in, in this country, we have seen uh, the data. Uh, over 80% of all the cases that have died recently in the country are people who are not vaccinated. So um, it, is, it is really, it makes sense. And it is the responsibility of government to ensure that we secure the lives and property of the people. And uh, what is common good for everyone, you know, government would always ensure that it happens so that we protect the majority of the people in the country. So looking at the goal um, and then looking at where we are right now, 111 million, we're still at about 6 million people who have taken the jab so far. And I mean, just a little percentage of that 111 million are federal civil servants. So I wonder for the larger population, or at least for the uh, people left in that 111 million target, uh, will they be some sort of enforcement as well to ensure that they are captured. Uh, I wonder what the, the game plan is for them. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a dynamic process. Um, and like I told you, this is just uh, the beginning. And government is trying to set example. Certainly, um, you have had some of the states have already taken uh, similar actions. So you will now add uh, state public health services. The state governors are also going to make some procl proclamation very soon, um, you know, requesting that um, uh, their own civil servants also uh, get vaccinated. We are aware that the private sector has already started doing this. Most of the multinational corporations are also enforcing it. Um, and therefore, it is a stepwise process. Um, this is not uh, something that uh, will say that we have a grand plan uh, to say that everybody must be vaccinated at once. Uh, we move, you know, we look at the gains and then we move to the next step and get people. Certainly, in a not very far uh, future, People will not be able to travel out of the, of, the, of the country if you don't have vaccine. So for this category of people, their drive to get vaccination, you know, will be because they want to travel. Um, and when you see others get vaccinated, then you also get kind of motivated. And I'm sure uh, very soon, Coyote, uh, public events also, you know, will try to scrutinize because everybody wants to be safe.
Everybody wants to make sure that they do not constitute risk to others. And we'll start seeing this and it will improve um, our coverage generally. The target is really to be able to achieve 70 to 80% vaccination coverage so that we can lower down our restrictions. People can be free you know, to go to most public places without the fear um, you know, of getting uh, the risk of having a COVID infection. Well, to be clear, anyway, vaccination is still ongoing across the country, but without some challenges. And of course, it's not as fast as you would, I mean, desire. Some centers have reported not having doses at all. Some others have, but it's a different brand. And that brings me to the next question. Is it right to offer a different second dose or ask recipients who have taken maybe one dose of AstraZeneca, for example, to then take or begin the process again with a different vaccine. We've had reports of that and some call it vaccine cocktail. What's the position on that one? So um, as you are aware, these vaccines um, are new, but um, we have data from other countries of people who have taken uh, different brands uh, of vaccine. And the consensus among the scientific community is that even um, doing different vaccines actually confers higher uh, level of immunity uh, than just doing a single vaccine. Most of the people who have had two doses of a particular vaccine, you know, will have a booster from um, uh, another brand uh, of the vaccine. Uh, and that creates, you know, better immunity, uh, the body to recognize even the different variants uh, and so on and so forth. But for now, the challenge for us in Nigeria is not even uh, talking about booster doses or having cocktail of, of vaccines, but the ones that are available, the two doses, you know, of, of the basic vaccines are the ones that we want people to, to take. Um, but certainly, you know, there will be a time uh, we're also conducting a study uh, currently in the country uh, just to uh, monitor, you know, the uh, antibody levels of people who have been vaccinated and to determine what will be the appropriate time when you will need an additional booster dose. Uh, but for now, our preoccupation is to get people to get vaccinated, you know, with the basic uh, vaccines that are available in the country. So we're winding down in a minute, Dr. Mohammed, and let's just leave it on this note. What's the plan for the festive season? You know, people are already making plans to travel both within and from outside the country. They will converge in large gatherings. And I'm just thinking, how is the PSC approaching this? We are quite apprehensive. Um, we know that we are quite vulnerable. Uh, considering the level of vaccination in this country. We've not vaccinated uh, more than 3% uh, of our population. Uh, we know that um, our hospitals are uh, in a very, um, uh, not very good conditions. So they can easily be overwhelmed. We know that the healthcare system generally, you know, in the country is weak. And therefore, um, any uh, large amount of infections or different variants that come into this country will really constitute um, a great risk to our health system. And therefore, we are taking very serious steps. Um, for now, we, didn't, we do not have any country in the restricted list. Uh, you know, for travel uh, from Nigeria. Uh, but we are going to review that, um, reviewing uh, also what is going on globally, identifying where the infections are likely to come from and institute measures that are necessary in our points of entry uh, to ensure that um, new infections do. We minimize the number of uh, new infections that are going to come in and to make sure that we detect variants um, that are of concern as early uh, as possible so that we can mitigate and contain their spread in the country. Well, that's the goal, definitely. I'd like to thank you so much, Dr. Mukhtar Mohammed, the National Incident Manager, Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank you, Kyode. It's a pleasure. So we started off on livelihoods notes. We moved to life. We're now back to livelihoods. And you, Tinekita State, have been deliberating on the best way to shake off the unpleasant economic effects of COVID-19 and get their businesses back on track. Do take a listen. As many young persons, we need to get vaccinated. That is one. Because what, COVID, what the COVID um, vaccine does to the body is, as soon as you take it, it keeps you away from the major disease itself. Even as much as we know that, okay, if, if you take COVID, um, you have um, COVID-19 vaccine, what you are being protected from is um, diseases and all that. But what is major is, for as young persons that are here, 
to be able to preach or to be able to tell other people that it is important for us to take what the COVID-19 vaccine. So visit our website, channelstv.com, for more updates and a better understanding of the pandemic, plus other stories, all at your fingertips. Well, that's the COVID-19 update. Thank you for watching. I'm Kayode Okikulu. Do continue to take responsibility.